Our guest was selected to the Fortune Magazine list of world's 50, not 100, 50 greatest leaders. Mr. Strive Masewa, welcome and the rest. Thank you. Thank you, my, my dear brother, for those kind remarks. Your Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, the Honorable Deputy President, Speaker of the National Assembly, Speaker of the Senate, Your Excellency's Governors, distinguished guests, my brothers and sisters. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege of visiting His Excellency the President with the President of the Rockefeller Foundation. And we spent an exhilarating hour sharing some of our passions for the continent. We talked about agricultural development in Kenya and the leadership of Kenya. We talked about Kenya's pioneering leadership in the new digital economy and the jobs that could be created. But at the end of our discussion, as I was leaving, the president grabbed my arm and he whispered to me, he said, and you know, our great challenge is all these things that we want to do without peace and security we cannot achieve them. And I agreed with him, not knowing that within three days of that discussion, we would have that terrible incident at Garissa University, where 147 young lives were lost. I'd be amiss not to tell you that I wept that day as did all Africans and all peace-loving people across the world. 147 young lives. I pray for their families. Africa is a continent of great and extraordinary potential. We all, it's almost a cliche now to say some of the fastest growing economies in the world are now African. As a pioneering African businessman working across many different countries, I never cease to be amazed every day by what we could achieve. But you know, I'm reminded uh, about an interview I did with CNN, which happened to take place in my study. And as they were preparing for this interview, the interviewer was wandering around in my study, and she saw a whole section of my study with Bibles. I have translations of different Bibles. I even have a copy of the first English translation of the Bible. And she said, I heard that you, you read the Bible every day for at least two hours. I said, well, that's when I don't have enough time. <laughs> so she says to me, so what do you Give me an example of what you get out of the Bible. I said, well, I would have given it to you today, but a brother spoke about delegation 5,000 years ago. Jethro taught Moses about delegation. What more do you want to know? I know there are people writing books and making money out of it now, but you know, delegation is a settled issue. I could have given an example to say, you know, the orphans we sent to school. I was inspired when reading the Bible one morning. I went to the office and I said to my friend, one of my colleagues, I said, you know, the Israelites were told by God that you must leave 
at the end of every harvest something in your fields for the poor but we don't have fields so what do we do we're not farmers anymore I run a telephone company so okay so why don't we just set aside two percent of the gross revenue and send children to school so we send 40,000 every year God bless you but time would be a miss and I know the president's time is extremely limited and has been extremely generous but I want to share with you just one example that I didn't share that morning and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tested him saying teacher what shall I do to inherit eternal life he said to him what is written in the law what's it what's your reading of it so he answered and said you shall love the Lord your God and all with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself and he answered he said you've answered rightly but the man went further and said but who is my neighbor I listened to the honorable member of parliament let me answer you on this he said who is my neighbor we all know the story of the Good Samaritan and I shall truncate that about how a man was thrown in the ditch and left for dead by robbers that was Jesus's response and then he said to the man who is that man's neighbor and the man said I suppose the Samaritan now the term good Samaritan has so gone into the English lexicon it's an adjective we say the good Samaritan if I say to you good Samaritan you know exactly what I'm talking about but who were the Samaritans this is what I went to study for a couple of hours in my Bible the Jews and the Samaritans by this time had been two separate nations for almost 800 years they had once been one nation but a civil war had divided them you know the story but along the way the Samaritans had created their own religion there was deep animosity deep hatred between the Samaritans and the Jews and for Jesus that morning to have raised the Samaritan and used a Samaritan as the example of a good neighbor to whom he said in another passage the second greatest commandment is like unto the first love your neighbor as yourself so the Samaritan a, diff a man of a different religion a man of a different nation a man of a different tribe was chosen by Jesus as the example of a neighbor that you had to love even as yourself and if you wanted to make heaven you had to love the Samaritan your neighbor can be a different race your neighbor can be someone different of a different nation different tribe different religion but Jesus said you must love him as yourself I had much to share with you but my brother covered it all he stood here in his crutches such courage such strength that is my neighbor that is your neighbor Africa's potential this great continent which by the middle of this century will be bigger than China our middle class will be greater than China to unleash the full potential of this continent we have to pull down the borders we have to pull down our differences no matter what our fathers may have told us about what happened in the past it is in the past 
This continent is a giant waiting to be awakened. And to awaken that giant, we must kick the elephant out of the room. And that elephant is intolerance. That elephant is the injustice where you cannot live with your neighbor. We have to live with our neighbor. I am your neighbor. When I walked down the street of Nairobi, until I opened my mouth, you couldn't tell where I came from because I am really a Kenyan. I am an African. I believe in this continent and its extraordinary potential. Our young people are going to drive the world by the middle of this century. Your Excellency, thank you. God bless Kenya. God bless Africa. God bless you all.